Okay, hello again. So today we are going to be talking about something uh, which is a very important principle of economics. Um, and it is related with uh, production possibility frontier. So till now we saw production possibility frontier curve, uh, how it looks. So it is a curve which is like this. And then we say that it shifts upwards as the technology changes because you are expanding the frontiers of production. And then we said that you can be inside the production possibility frontier, like here, inside. You can't be here because your technology does not allow you, but you can be here. So we said that that is possible. And then we said that there are three types of inefficiencies. Uh, it was a technical inefficiency, a locative inefficiency, and um, excess inefficiency. These are the inefficiencies which make us remain inside the production possibility frontier. You have seen all of this. Now today, what is it that we are going to be talking about? Today, we are going to talk about the fact that PPF is always like this. It's not a curve like this. It's a curve like this. It's a concave curve. It's not convex. That is what we have been drawing. But is there a particular reason? And is it necessary that the curve should be like this and it should not be like this? No, it should not be like this. It has to be like this. And the reason why the curve has to be like this is because there is a very important principle, not principle, in fact, a law behind it. Um, and the law is called the law of diminishing marginal returns. And uh, so let's see what we are trying to say when we say that it is a law of diminishing marginal returns, which is at play. So let me share the screen with you. And what I want you to do is, I want you to draw the production possibility frontier. And I want you to make lines which are of exactly the same size on different parts of the curve exactly the same size on different parts of the curve you make those lines and then what you do is you connect those lines with the curve so you have drawn these lines which are exactly of the same size and then you are drawing the lines which is meeting that what is this story that this graph is trying to tell us? So start with this point. At this point, you were growing only wheat and nothing else but wheat. And you were growing no chana at all. Then you decide that, no, I don't like roti alone. I want to eat something with roti. And so you say, I will put this much part to, draw, to have chana. And the remaining, this entire land, I'm going to be still using for wheat. And for giving up that much wheat, I get so much of chana. And I say, Are wah, I like this. This is nice. I like the taste of chana. I want more chana. I want to grow more chana. And so I want to give up some more land. Now, uh, but I want same increase once again so i was getting this much i want exactly that much chana once again so i want double that amount of chana and for that what i find is that that for additional chana of the same quantity i have to give up more resources from wheat for getting the same quantity of chana once again, when I'm growing only so much of wheat and the remaining part is chana, for growing the same quantity of chana, now I have to give more resources of wheat. For growing same quantity of chana, when I'm already growing so much chana anyway, for growing some more, I have to give up even more resources of wheat. So what am I saying? I'm saying that as I grow more and more chana, for me to get 
say if this is say 100 kg of chana so i get 100 kg of chana by giving up about 30 kg or 40 kg of wheat and the resources which i involved in that i come here i want 100 kg of chana now that i am already growing so much chana now i want additional 100 kg chana i'll have to give up not 30 or 40 kg of wheat i have to actually give up 100 kg of wheat and the resources involved in that i have to turn to chana i am now growing already sorry i am already growing so much of chana i want 100 more kg of chana now i will have to give up 150 kg of wheat or the resources involved with cultivating wheat and so on so basically what we are trying to say is that that to get the same quantity of chana as you grow above and above the curve you have to give up more and more resources to get the same quantity of chana and why does this happen this happens because of a law which is called the law of diminishing marginal returns this is a law remember this is not a principle this is not a theorem this is a law and what does this law say this law says that as you are trying to convert more the resources you are trying to take away the resources from wheat and you are trying to send it to chana for the same quantity of chana as you transfer more and more resources you would get lesser and lesser quantity of chana so i am giving up resources which are required for 100 kg of wheat i am transferring it to chana i'll get about say 100 kg of chana then instead of char traveling uh, i mean giving up 100 kg i am now giving up 200 kg of wheat but i will not get 200 kg of chana i will get just 150 kg of chana so this is the thing and why does this happen this happens because as you transfer the resources more and more from wheat to chana the resources which are specialized in making wheat will not be able to adjust to chana you know so like for example uh, giving you an example which will make you understand this better so if i am transferring the laborers from agriculture to industry the first few laborers whom i would transfer from industry uh, agriculture to industry they are doing manual work over here they are doing manual work over there no problems i will get increasing uh, industrial production but the skilled labor is falling short and in general the labor is say falling short in industry and i am transferring some more and some more and some more from agriculture to industry as i transfer more and more from agriculture to industry the farmers will have to start working with the machines of industries machines of factories they have never done this before this is not something that they know very well and so the increase in production is not going to be so very good so when you are transferring resources from one use to another the resources which are specialized resources which are experts these are expert farmers but that doesn't mean they will become expert industrial workers so the expertise is now being used lesser and you are transferring them to something where they are not so good so their production will fall okay so this kind of thing is what leads to the law of diminishing marginal returns because as you transfer more and more you are going to be transferring the things which are not very easy to transfer and that's why it will give you lesser and lesser returns. okay now this is the way we understand it through the ppf but let me make you understand that the law of diminishing marginal returns actually works for the whole life for everything and so let me explain why and how so the way it works uh, as far as our own life is concerned is uh, say for example uh, now uh, 
most of you must have uh, started staying in hostels and uh, when you start staying in hostel one thing which you realize very soon i mean within first 3 to 4 months is that that you start getting tired of the hostel too okay so you always look forward to some opportunity to go out so now say for example um you are uh, going out and you are extremely hungry because the classes had gone on for a long time and you had not eat, eaten any breakfast and it's one o'clock and you are you are starving and somebody says chal chal i'll give you party let's go and you happily happy and you all decide that you are going to be having pani puri so you all go to a stall and there all of you start off and oh my god the first plate of pani puri those five puris are like amrit i mean it was so wonderful to eat it you are so hungry and the pani puri was good and you thoroughly enjoyed it maximum satisfaction first plate second plate of pani puri now you are eating it's not that that you are relishing every single puri you are just eating it because you are still hungry but it's not that thing you oh boy i was starving for this it's already that satisfaction level has started going down and then by the time you take the third plate you're full you can't have any more so the satisfaction that you would receive when you eat the third one is like bas theek hai enough yeah what a chow thank you but take it if your friend insists ki nahi yaar i am paying you have to have more you say ki nahi yaar i am full i can't have no 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 you have to have you have more but now you are not at all happy about it you are just having it because he is asking you to have theek hai so the satisfaction the fun the fulfillment that you receive from eating pani puri starts coming down as you have more and more and more you have more plates you have lesser satisfaction one more plate even lesser satisfaction and then somebody comes and says that uh, yaar he was giving a party and you guys didn't call me now i'm here now you guys have to give me some company i can't be eating all alone like this come on and uh, so you all say ki yaar we have been eating so much we don't have any hunger any more nahi we can't eat we can't eat but he says no 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 just one more plate for my sake please please one more plate and so you say okay fine we we'll eat one more and you eat one more when you were not hungry at all and then what happens your stomach goes for a toss and you go you get loose motions and what not so now you have entered the region of negative returns to scale not only you are not receiving any satisfaction out of this you are actually losing out on satisfaction out of this this is law of diminishing marginal returns and it applies everywhere everywhere the only condition for the law of diminishing marginal returns to apply is that that you should have some inputs which are fixed and you should have some inputs which are variable so as far as this pani puri example was concerned the variable input of course was the plate of pani puri what was the fixed input what is fixed in this entire episode your stomach the capacity of your stomach is a fixed thing so in that fixed thing you are adding more and more and because of that what is happening is that that your satisfaction level goes down because you have only so much capacity to enjoy similar thing is true as far as this chana example was concerned that you start growing chana and you get a lot of returns but as you grow more and more and more and more from the same piece of land the piece of land has only certain capacity and after a point of time the returns that it would give for the number of seeds that you put in 
would be lesser and lesser because now you would give lesser space between two plants and you would not be able to give fertilizers for everything and because of all of this your level of production will start coming down unless of course technology changes you know and if technology changes then everything changes that we have seen in ppf so then your ppf is going to expand but on your ppf when you move from below to up you would find that the law of diminishing marginal returns applies law of diminishing marginal returns also applies when it comes to your uh, intelligence um god has not made all of us geniuses so what happens is that when i try to pass an exam just to pass an exam get just 35% or 40% you don't have to study for more than half an hour you want to get not just 40% you want to get at least 70 to 75% to get some decent score somewhere you know now you can't afford just half an hour you will have to though it is just double but just studying for one hour you are not going to get that 75% now you'll have to study for at least one and a half to two hours but you say no i don't want to get just 75% i want to get at least 90 to 95% i want to be a nine pointer the moment you decide to be nine pointer you will have to put much 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 more effort you will have to study almost every day and you would be very regular in your classes in writing notes and after all of that you would be able to get that which means it would of so many more hours so from half an hour to this diminishing marginal returns i put in more and more and more effort to get 5% and 5% and 5% more i'm getting just 5% more but the number of hours that i have to put in for getting that additional 5% more is much more so economics is all about how much is this addition that you have to make and for additional output how much additional input you would require that's what we study and we realize that if you have some inputs which are fixed capacity then you will have to put more and more additional inputs to get the same output the same additional output and there would come a point where you would not be able to get additional output with even adding more and more inputs and that is because now you have reached the full capacity and then you will go into what is called the negative returns scale so this was the law of diminishing marginal returns and we'll look at the limitations of this law in the next lecture